How's it going everybody? This is Ruby as always and welcome to a Feed the Beast tutorial. Now today what we're going to be going over is how to power a steam boiler using bees. So the first step you're going to want to do is you're going to want to obtain the distilled bees. Now warning I'm about to tell you how to get them. If you don't want to know and don't want spoilers I'm going to put some text on the screen that tells you what time to skip to. So you've got two seconds one two okay alright so on the screen now you guys are seeing kind of the whole route now I explained everything even down to how to get common bees however you can pretty much just look at kind of the middle and the bottom to see everything that you need to do now this will spoil a bunch of other bees like the oily bees the primeval bees ancient bees and I forget and of course noble but if you're into bees then you probably got noble bees so the first thing you're gonna want is an alviary and you're going to want six frame housings. I recommend an alviary just because of the high production rate and the fact that we can put twice as many frames in there. It's also recommended that you automate this. So we're using a wooden transport pipe with an Arctic gate in there set to redstone signal off energy pulse. And then it comes into an apiary pipe and we just have the side going into the alviary set to any bees and the side coming out here to this chest to anything. Now once this thing, if it has the right fertility and it produces too many drones, it'll actually come over here. They're not going to pop out on the ground and cause extra entities or anything. So as you can see, I've had this going for probably about two minutes and we've already got 12 combs. So it's a pretty good rate. And then also, these are the slowest workers. If you can get a, say, fastest or fast productivity serum, and then inject this bee with that serum, you can see a lot better results. So let's get on to the next part. <coughs> so for the next step, I've got all of the items that we need right here. I'm just going to grab them out of here. So. How you're going to want to set this up is you're going to want to get your centrifuge and then wooden transport pipe, diamond pipe, and then your squeezer, like so. And we're going to take off Arctic iron and gates and put them in here. And I believe they can be ore gates either. We're only going to use one of them, but we need the advanced off Arctic gates due to we need to be able to uh, signal it with red pipe wire. So we're going to go ahead and put that on here. And we're going to say if the red pipe signal's on, we're going to energy pulse. And we're going to say over here, if there is uh, space in inventory, red pipe signal. So as long as this has inventory room, it's going to put on the red pipe signal, which is then going to make the centrifuge energy pulse out its items. So next, you're going to want to get a iron pipe right here. And you're going to want to put a barrel down here. Now this is for the honey drops that you're going to get out of centrifuge in the oily combs. Because whenever you centrifuge, if we go ahead and press U, you can see that you get a 75% chance of a honey drop and a 60% chance of an oily propolis. So what we're going to want to do is let's just grab some honey drops real fast. I've got some in my beelizer here. And then we're going to set this diamond pipe. Oops, I think we got to take the gate out first so there we go so we'll get this set and then we're also going to need an oily propolis like so and we're going to want to set the oily propolis to green and we're going to want to set the honey drop to blue this is because if the honey drop goes into here it's going to try to squeeze the honey into the honey drop into honey and it's either going to try to go into your refinery and not work uh, the refinery is another item we're going to be using or it's just going to clog up your inventory or just not know what to do about it so we want to separate the honey drops from the oily propoluses so now we can go ahead and throw the gate back in here and set this to space and inventory and we need to put a pipe thing on here and then we're going to tell it to turn on the red pipe signal. Now this is good because we need a we need another barrel here. Put it right here. And then we're going to want to put a wooden transport pipe on the top because whenever you squeeze oily propoluses, you get a chance of getting a regular propolis. 
and uh, if it gets 64 within here then it's just going to stop your machine from doing anything so you're going to want to do something like this and then you can even use regular authentic gates but I don't feel like having to go through any eye and get them so we're just going to set it and this is what you would set the authentic gate to red some signal off energy pulse and if you do it out of the top it's going to grab that inventory slot so now that we have the basic stuff down now what we're going to want to do is we're going to run we're going to run some power to these machines because these machines require power so i'm just going to have these redstone energy conduits come right here and i'm going to put this redstone energy cell here and we're going to need a wrench and wrench that around so that the orange side's coming out of the energy cell and that's going to start powering these as we can see there so you can even cover this back up if you wanted to like so so next we're going to want to run some liquidux out of the squeezer so we're going to connect liquidux right here and then we're going to make it we're going to have it make an L like so so for the liquidux to take a, uh, a liquid out of here we're going to need to wrench it so that you get the arrow facing out and you're going to need to give it a redstone signal like so the next step is we're going to grab this refinery and we're going to put two right next to each other. Now, eventually you will only really need one. However, this is going to fill up with oil, so you don't really want to waste it. But this is so that the refineries can keep up with the steam boiler. And especially if you drop below and then try to get it to hurry up and produce a bunch of more steam, you're going to need two refineries to keep up with it. So these will come into here and then we're going to grab some liquidux again and then we're going to come out of the top and let's grab some blocks so that we can give these a redstone signal like so and then we're going to pop two levers down here now we're going to go ahead we're going to wait to wrench those so we're going to come over here and then now this is where you have an option you can either put it into a tank and have it store some of the liquid as a buffer or you can always just pump this directly into your steam boiler so let's go ahead and we're gonna, I'm gonna save you the trouble of setting up the tank and we're just gonna run it directly into our steam boiler so now that we have these liquid ducts ready we're gonna use liquid fired fuel boxes and high pressure boilers now you have a choice between high pressure boilers and low pressure boilers the main difference that you get with the high pressure boiler uh, blocks is that it can go up to a thousand Celsius. So that's why I use them. So you're going to want to do a three by three of these liquid fired fuel boxes. And now where you put these, now the size depends. Personally, I have a, I have one that is this tall and it's just a three by three by three of high pressure boiler blocks you can also go up to four high however I really never saw the point in that but we will still demonstrate that in this video so let's just place the rest of these and as you can see we have 16,000 uh, storage for one of the fuels and then 108,000 for the alternate fuel such as water now if we go ahead and oop, 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 let's hop back up here and let's place this other row like so you can see now that you get more water storage now I didn't see the point because you never got any more of this storage uh, I don't remember if this increased or not so 1 million 152 yes yeah, so you get more steam storage which isn't I guess a bad trade-off so now that we have our uh, we, well, we don't want to do that now, now that we have this boiler connected like so what you're going to want to get next is an aqueous accumulator or you, there, there's other fuels that you can uh, secondary fuel this machine with, such as biofuel or something like that. So we're going to want to make an infinite source, pop the aqueous accumulator down here, and then we're just going to use Liquidux again to pump the water into the steam boiler. Now, since this is a thermal expansion machine, you don't need a lever or anything. It'll automatically take the liquid out of the machine. So our next step is we're going to step we're going to set up the um, the steam engines so what we're going to want to do is take three like so out of the machine and we're going to do something else with those so these are going to come down come over here and then we're going to connect them in the middle with three more over here 
just like this. Now this is going to come over and then we're going to drop it down like so. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put energy conduits on all four sides. One, way, one away so that we have room for the engines. Like so. And you'll probably want to play with this a little bit and get it out of the engine's ways. But we can go uh, vertically down instead of up instead. So what we're going to want to go ahead and do is bring this up as far as we can. Like that. We're going to bring them up two more. I do that every time. Y'all see that? <laughs> so this has got enough for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 11 or 10 11 12 so if we do this we have let's see that'll add four more so that'll be 16 and that's pretty that's a pretty good number uh, I think the max is about 18 steam engines so we'll just bring this out make us get us some working room and we'll bring them all down one more like so now we'll go ahead and bring the liquid up down all the way and now what you're going to want to do is start placing your industrial steam engines connecting to the conduits and the liquid ducts. And there we go. So what we can also do is that we can even bring this up one more so that these don't touch to that and this one doesn't get treated any differently than the rest of them. So there we go. Now we're going to want to wrench all of these conduits out like so so that they're all orange on the tips. There we go, and one more row to do. There, so now this is all ready. Now all we gotta do next is connect all of these together, and then this is where it's up to you. Uh, personally, what I do is I connect it to an energy tesseract, so that these can power my quarry and things like that. So we're gonna bring this all down one more. We're gonna plop an energy tesseract here, and then we're gonna bring this down bring this down bring this down and one more so there we go now you can you'll want to set your channel and your frequency to whatever you'd like now we need to add three more liquid ducts here this is what I found to work best with the number of engines that we have here so the next thing you're going to want to do after you add the next three is you're going to want to wrench all of these liquid ducts out now the steam will come out without wrenching it and applying a redstone signal however it's actually slower to just let it naturally come out of the machine and not wrench it and give it a redstone signal so what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a lever and we're gonna come down here and we're gonna put and we're gonna turn them all on and then we're gonna do the same right here and then we're gonna come down here do the same thing again and then get them all down see now you should be good once this thing produces steam, it'll start going automatically into the engines and then going either into your tesseract or if you wanted to put a redstone energy cell or something like that, just remember that if you're going to take this redstone energy cell, you'll need, I believe it's the crescent wrench to take it. So now we're going to come back over here and by now, if you, you'll want to give it a couple hours, you wanna, you'll want to build up about 20 stacks of oily combs. Now you're going to just throw these into the centrifuge it's going to start working and personally in my OP world I have a bunch of hoppers on top of this now as we can see here did we get anything oh we got a honey drop which is then going to go over here and into this barrel and you see we got an oily propolis there now the squeezer is going to produce oil for us let's just give it a second see oh, oil and then you can see that they automatically went into these refineries now we need to supply the refineries with uh, MJ power so we're gonna put these here this here and wrench that now these are gonna start getting power and start going up and down up and down up and down it looks pretty neat if you ask me so now as you can see we're now producing fuel you can see kind of the yellow Gatorade looking stuff in there. That's fuel. That's the good stuff. So now this is where you can either run it to a steam boiler or alternatively you can run it to like a, I believe, a diesel generator. So if we actually take a look at fuel, you can see 384 KEU at 12 EU per tick in a diesel generator. 
that's not bad, but that seems like a lot of energy, but it's at 12 EU per tick. So that's really up to you. If you would rather do it through a steam boiler and then use power converters if you're in the ultimate pack, uh, that's also a good alternative. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to wait for this to build up a little more uh, fuel. We're going to supplement this though because it just simply isn't going to have enough right away and I don't want to have to make y'all sit through that. So we'll do this and then we'll just start doing that and we're going to go wrench this around, get us a lever so that these will start uh, going into the, uh, the steam boiler. So we're just going to keep filling this up and get it filled up with fuel. So we'll be right back. Alright guys, we're back. So our steam boiler is producing steam now. However, you notice that these engines aren't turning on. This is because the industrial steam engines require a redstone signal to actually turn on. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab some red alloy wire because it works best. We're going to grab some blocks and we're just going to use a lever. So what you're going to want to do is just bring them up right here next to the engines. And we don't have to do that one because that, that other block tile is servicing them. And then we're just going to wrap this redstone alloy wire around these blocks. Now this is going to supply a redstone signal to both engines. We still have to turn them on though. And we'll just finish up this one. And then what you're going to want to do is put levers on both tops and then turn them on. Now once these things get enough steam to get going, which they usually instantly will, they'll actually start going. You can see all the steam particles coming off, and then you'll start producing MJs, as you can see. See, we already have 3,000 built up, and since these engines are running so slowly right now, it's going to come in burst. So as you can see, 8,000, then all of a sudden, it's going to be 10,000, so you'll want to keep that in, uh, in mind. Now, your quarry doesn't work well with burst of MJs. It works best with a constant flow. But once these engines get enough steam in them and they start building up some heat, you can see that these are all outputting 8 MJ per tick. And it's uh, supplying it pretty well. Look, we already have almost 30,000. And now you can see that it's starting to come in at a pretty steady trickle. So this would work best for your quarries. They just kind of have to, you know, build up some power first. So that is going to conclude today's tutorial. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave it in the comments below or send me a private message on YouTube. And I do read all my comments and all my messages, so I will get to your question. If you have any, any at all, any suggestions to how to improve this system, feel free to either send in a video response or leave it in the comments or something like that uh, just so we can help everybody out because who knows, there may be a better way to improve this system. This is just what I invented in my LP world. So if you guys want to see this in action, I do a, I do, I do a Let's Play on the Hypermind server. It's a SMP server, which is uh, you know vanilla for the most part. Uh, there's no cheating or anything like that. Uh, you can see all of these are green, so these are getting some good power now. So yeah, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this in-depth tutorial, and I'll see you guys next time.